All right, happy Tuesday. It is time for The Woodlands Live. Ask me anything. <clears throat> um, I am Dr. Correa at The Woodlands Plastic Surgery, and this is where we field uh, any questions you guys may have um, live, as well as if you email us or use our um, any of our forms um, on Instagram or any other social media outlets. Um, send in all your questions, um, anything plastic surgery related, ask anything you want um, from non-surgical treatments to surgical treatments, med spa stuff, um, implant questions, um, celebrity stuff, anything you want. So um, anyway, without further ado, um, let's see, this week we got a question about uh, Fernanda Flores. Um, I actually saw this as well. So she's, you know, there's a new TV series called The Single Life. Um, I'm not sure if it's a Netflix or an Amazon thing, I'm not sure, but it's called The Single Life. Um, and the cover photo, at least on the, the you know, the feed on, on the, uh, the Amazon or Netflix, um, shows Fernanda Flores, who's obviously starring in the show. Um, and one of the questions was, uh, or the question was, you know, does she have a breast augmentation um, or what type of implants does she have? And so um, <clears throat> there's no way to screen share. So it's a little bit, you know, kind of, I do have some photographs. I just put, pulled some up on my phone so we can kind of look at that together. Um, forgive the reflection there. And so there's a question is, you know, is that, is that a, a boob job? Does it look good? Does it not? Um, the more interesting, so, uh, I did do a little bit of research and my suspicion was, yes, she does probably have a breast augmentation looking through her social media stuff. And then, um, the more interesting question though, when you look at this photograph though, is how does that look to your eyes? So this actually brings up a really interesting discussion about uh, photoshopping um, because she does have a breast augmentation and the photograph here appears to depict kind of a, you know, kind of a fake boob look or that kind of augmented, really sculpted appearance to the um, cleavage area in the upper pole of the breast. Um, give me one sec here. So if you zoom in, you know, that kind of, curvature here um, that's really exaggerated. That's that's the typical sculpted breast augmentation appearance. And so it's a natural question, are they real or are they fake? The thing I would draw your attention to though is that this photograph is almost certainly photoshopped. Um, and you can tell that because I'm getting some reflection issues from my little light here. Um, the reason, that light's killing me, I'm sorry. The reason you can tell is because if you look at the width of her actual breast based on the dress, which is gonna be here to here. And then you look at the actual width of what would theoretically be the implant. If that's a circle, it's obviously a circle, right? So if you actually complete that circle, the width of the breast only goes to here. So it actually, it actually makes it look like she got the wrong size implant placed. <laughs> um, and let me just do something to really draw it home just for for fun and education sake which is what this all about is, is all about and don't get me wrong uh being completely genuine here that's a very beautiful person obviously she has a nice augmentation um if you go through her instagram it's full of you know very you know um provocative photographs um so she you know she has a nice result of that i'm, I'm this is not a knock on fernanda flores at all this is a knock on just you know a a very quick and dirty uh, Photoshop job that was obviously done. So obviously it's just with my finger and an iPhone, but the implant width is that, and you can see the width of her breast is that. And so this circle, this Photoshopped circle to show off cleavage and upper pole fullness was just incorrectly done on the breast. It should be wider, it should be higher, and it should be extending further lateral. And so if you look at it close, you can actually tell that this is very obviously photoshopped and done. And just to, to demonstrate kind of the fun part or the interesting part, you know, social media is amazing with what people post and what they um, are willing to share and all of that. I found one that was <laughs> the least salacious and provocative that I could because I'm not interested in, in demonstrating that here. Um, but I found one where she's actually wearing kind of regular clothing. Um, 
and you can see that she does have that very nice curvaceous kind of sculpted appearance to the breast. And again, it based, you know, it's an in-clothing result. I haven't obviously done an exam, but in clothing, she obviously looks very good. But you can see the diameter of that circle. If you if you finish that circle, it actually fills out the entire breast. And so therefore that looks like a you know, it looks like a more natural breast, whereas the other photograph looks kind of weird if you actually look at it closely. And most, you know, again, I'm not even really hating on the Photoshoppers. It's, you know, this is a billboard advertisement, get it done, get it published sort of thing. Um, you know, these people aren't uh, plastic surgeons, but doing the same thing to this photograph, if you if you draw the, the imaginary diameter of that, implant, bear with me. <clears throat> if you draw the imaginary diameter of that implant, it goes all the way out to the outside part of the breast towards the armpit or axilla as we call it, and actually fills out the entire breast and fits the width of her chest. And so, <clears throat> you know, it points out, um, the importance of measurements, anatomy, and proper base width selection is what we call it. I left my implants downstairs, but um, the width of the implant is super important in terms of getting a nice result that looks natural. Um, if you go too wide, it doesn't look right. If you go too narrow, it doesn't look right. Um, and, so, and so you can see on that initial photograph from the advertisement that I showed you how, if you actually look at it closely, that circle looks way too narrow for her actual chest. So, um, so it also, you know, this is just, it's kind of a fun little tangent and rabbit hole to go down because it brings up so many questions. Um, it brings up so many questions and issues that I deal with on a routine basis that social media have brought up. You know, it's, it's so funny. I'm finally old enough now where it's like you see these different generations of technologies and cosmetic concerns. And back in when I was young, everyone was harping on Victoria's Secret models and they're too skinny and everyone's photoshopped and it's airbrushed and yada, yada, yada. Now, ironically, with the, um, the huge push of reality TV in the 2000s, 2010s, and now social media where everyone kind of has their 15 minutes of fame, so to speak, and the amazing pl proliferation of readily available, halfway decent Photoshopping technology that we all have access to literally at our fingertips um, to airbrush, to cover up tear troughs. Everyone Photoshops their photos now. It's almost expected um, that, that things are going to be doctored up, even if it's just coming from your mom or whoever. Um, that all these photos are retouched, whether it's something as simple as a filter um, or a true actual app that can do Photoshopping uh, techniques and, and processes. Um, but it's very problematic um, from a plastic surgery standpoint because it has created an enormous amount of unrealistic expectations um, in terms of what can be achieved with plastic surgery. And the biggest, there's two problems that I routinely deal with um, related to social media because so many people will show me a photograph of any random model or a celebrity or whoever, just some, you know, anybody. And they'll say, oh, I really like this result. This is what I want to look like. And um, very commonly related to body stuff, mostly body stuff, buttock and it's buttock, breast and nose, I think are the most common ones where you get very inaccurate, distorted views of what is real or not. Um, and the photographs are taken strategically to enhance whatever the person wants to enhance, whether it's make their butt look more big, make their waist look more narrow, um, make the breast look more curvaceous from whatever angle. And social media is all about angles, lighting, filters, and photoshopping, and garments. Um, and so people will come in and show me like a buttock result or look that they're going for, but the patient will be completely seated, hip shot, with their buttocks back, their hips as far forward as possible, their back arched, wearing an extremely tight garment that sucks in the waist. And so it makes them look like they have a waist that is this big around and a buttock that is this big and gives this very dramatic appearance that is attractive to a lot of people. Um, but it's 
completely a doctored photograph or it's, I'm not saying it's real. I'm saying it's a product of angles, garments, lighting, um, um, and photography. And so, <clears throat> you know, what I always tell people is show me a picture of them in normal lighting from a normal distance with just a straight on shot, you know, with them just standing on their two feet. And it's, you know, the minute you do that, the illusion will fall apart. Um, and that's why they do it. And that's why they have so many followers. You know, they, they're able to master these angles to make themselves look not even amazing, you know, beyond amazing, literally unreal. And it's, it's very akin to the, to the Photoshopping, airbrushing, whatever you want to call it, for the Victoria's Secret models back in, in the 1990s and 2000s, um, except now it's ubiquitous and it's on everybody's feed. Um, and so it's, it's really this race to kind of demonstrate <clears throat> technology more so than what plastic surgery can accomplish. Um, and so, you know, I actually, I tell patients, if you're looking for plastic surgery results, don't look at the post-op, look at the pre-op. You need to find someone that looks like you now and see what they look like after surgery and see if what, see what results are achievable. Um, because it, it, you know, there's always a post-op result or just a model that never had surgery that looks amazing. And it's like, wow, I'd love to look like her. But it's like, you know, just like a rhinoplasty, I can't take Brad Pitt's nose and put it on some random person. It's like, you're you and we've got to work with what we've got and make it look as good as possible. Um, and so there are limits set by anatomy, surgical technique um, and time, frankly, because we age tissue changes with time, tissue responds to the operations that are done to it. Um, and so there's, it's a more complex process. Um, and so getting these kind of snapshot social media photos with filters and angles and garments and all of these things, um, it, it just sets people up for a little bit of disappointment. And so it's, you know, <clears throat> it's all part of the process now. And it's so ubiquitous that you just need to um, accept it as part of the consultation process in terms of you know, getting people's feet planted kind of back on earth. And, you know, the other thing I tell people is somewhat tongue in cheek is, yeah, you can look like that as long as you're wearing the right garment and have the right lighting and choose the right angle, you know? Um, and, you know, obviously it's a tongue in cheek comment, but, um, you know, it just illustrates, illustrates the point in terms of um, what's, what Photoshopping and technology and all of that can do. So... Um, I rambled quite a bit on that one. We don't have a ton left. Um, let me, I'll answer another question kind of related to that, which is um, somebody had a question about, you know, I don't want to look fake or, you know, how come this person looks fake? Um, the fake boob look is something that, you know, it's a pejorative term. Um, you know, people sometimes say, oh, it looks obnoxious. Um, I stay away from that language just because I think it is a little bit uh, emotionally charged. I think it's very much a taste thing at this point. When I do consultations for breast augmentation, I basically try to, I try to set a spectrum of results and I tell people not every D cup looks the same, not every B cup looks the same, not every double D cup looks the same. And, you know, it's not, breast augmentation is not just about volume, it's also about shape and appearance and aesthetics and and like I said, not every D cup looks the same. And so um, the spectrum I said is from something so natural you couldn't tell an implant was placed to something so fake that anybody from across the room could tell that the patient obviously has breast implants in place. And I don't judge it one way or the other. It's purely a taste thing. And if some patients are attracted to one result or another, my role is to determine A, can we get that result in you? And B, um, um, can we get that result in you and, and B, what, what does it take to get there? You know, um, do we need a lift? Do we not need a lift? How big do we need to go? Um, you know, conceptually speaking, if you want the fake boob look, then the best way to get that is to be smaller breasted to begin with, um, extremely slender, and then put in basically the biggest implant you can put in. Um, and so what drives that kind of fake boob look is the implant. And so the more you see of the implant, the more of that sculpted or fake boob appearance that you get. You could take the exact same implant and put it in someone who's a super skinny A cup and it'll look extremely fake. You could take that same implant, put it in somebody that's the same height, 
same weight, but the patient's naturally a C cup breast instead of an A cup, it's not gonna have the same impact and not gonna look as fake or as sculpted as it will in that A cup, just because there's more natural tissue on top of it to kind of camouflage that and mask some of those angle changes and, and um, elasticity issues and chest wall issues that come when you're that thin and, and can see your rib cage through your chest and things like that. It tends to show off every angle. So uh, plenty more to talk about on that. I um, mean, just kind of scratched the surface of that, but that is kind of the, the, um, the short version, shall we say. Um, but anyway, you know, social media, it's it, like everything else, it's a blessing and a curse. It's got its upsides, it's got its downsides. Um, what I say is look at it, enjoy it, let it inspire you, let it motivate you, let it be a positive force, um, but also recognize and, and don't be duped into thinking that these photos are real by any practical definition, you know? Um, they're not, they're not. And so, you know, like I said, let them be a positive force and inspire you. Let it motivate your weight loss. Let it motivate things you're trying to do. Um, don't let it make you feel bad about yourself um, because it's, it's, very much, uh, it's very much not representing reality. Um, and so we just need to parse out what is realistic and what is not. Um, so anyway, uh, out of time for today. Um, that was a fun one. It's always fun looking at, um, at, uh, pop media, pop culture stuff. Um, so, uh, keep the questions coming. Um, hope you guys are having fun with this. I'm having fun with it and, um, we'll see you next week over and out. <laughs>